Welcome to the New Life Bible School. My name is Judith, and I am going to talk about God's love. God is love. He don't have love, but he is love. If God is love, do we find love without God? In life, it's many type of love between husband and wife, between parents and children, grandparents and grandchildren, among siblings, friends, and people love their pets. And this is for everyone, saved and unsaved. Of course, this love also is from God because there is no love, uh, because God is the creator of everything. But God's love is something else. And when we became born again, we will experience the love of God. This love is about natural feelings and it's deep. It's free and you don't deserve it. You can't do anything to receive it. It's a free gift. Uh, I will read from first. John 4, 18, and I read from the Amplified Bible. There is no fear in love. Greed does not exist. But perfect, complete, full-grown love drives out fear because fear involves uh, punishment. So the one who is afraid of God's judgment is not perf perfected in love has not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love. God's love is perfect with, n with no expectations from anybody, no fear, no evil, only purity and truth. God is truth. It means there is no lie in God. In other words, love and lie don't connect, they don't get together. Sometimes we can think the truth will hurt you, and it will, so we don't tell it. And that's right, truth will hurt sometimes, but in the end, a uh, lie will hurt more later. So um, it, the truth is always the best. <coughs> if we take God out of our society, then we can't blame God for everything we don't like. That makes no sense. If you take sugar out of your cake, you can't blame the sugar if the cake is not sweet. If you want a good life on earth, good life with love on earth in our so society, we need God everything with him. Nothing will succeed without God. Without God, in the end, no, nothing will succeed without God and his love. Romans 3, 10. As it is written and forever remains written, there is none righteous, none that meet God's standard, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is none who does good. No, not one. As Paul says, it is nothing real good in us without God. No real love without God. God is love. We can't separate God and love. Who is God loving? John 3, 16. For so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal, eternal life. God loves his creation, the planet, the animal, the trees, the flowers, and of course the people. No people 
was saved when Jesus died. So God loved the unsaved, the unwise, selfish, and sinful people in the world. His love was so strong, so he died for everyone when we were sinners. It's easy for people to love the good one, but God loves also the evil one. Jesus died, didn't die for, to save for the saved one, the justified holy people in the church. No, he died before the church was born. Because, with, because of love. He, God gave because all useless, sinful, hopeless and selfish people could, should be saved. He had a purpose for, hi, for his giving. He gave out of love and he wanted to do something with the sin. He wanted his family back and he couldn't get the family back if there was sin among us and God. Uh, Romans 6.6 6. We know that our old self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we could no, would no longer be slaves to sin. It would be very easy for me if I should cross crucify your flesh and and uh, the opposite, you should crucify me, my flesh. It was, would be easy for us. But we have to put the light to crucify our own flesh or put the light in our own life. Look for love in my life, not look for love in others' life. And crucifixion is not a good feeling, and it is a concrete thing. It's painful, and it's not a nice sight. But that's what Jesus did in love. But what is the result of Jesus' crucifixion? The resurrection and a new life. And that will be the result in our life also. Resurrection and a new life of living. When we go through difficulties, we have to look forward to the result, the victory. And we do, uh, we want to, to die of flesh because we want the love of God to live through us. That's why we do, we have to do it. And love can be easy, something we talk nice about. But what is the content? We can read what uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love endures with patience and sincerity. Love is kind and thoughtful and is not jealous and unwise. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not provoked, does not take into account of wrong and jurad. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoice with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. <coughs> Love never fails. <coughs> Patient, what's that? The devil can tell us that this is difficult. Patient is a difficult thing. But for God, nothing is difficult. The difficult part for us is to let God do it through us, to give him space to work in us. Don't let the flesh Take commando in the situation. When you feel the impotation is coming, what shall you do? Don't feed it. Capture it. Don't give it space in the situation. If you do that, 
It will be captured and patience will be a visible fruit in your life. So don't feed the <coughs> impatience. Feed the patience. It is not easy, but the easy thing is not always the right thing to do. God don't tell us to do the easy thing, but the right thing. To live by the spirit, not the flesh. When we choose the spirit way, it will be easier and easier. So the love of God, the fruit of the spirit will grow in our life. And we will build our character. Our soul will be strong and be, and be standing in the storms. Kindness. What is the opposite of kindness? Unkindness. What do we like by other people? Kindness or unkindness? When we experience unkindness from people, then we feel we get a good feeling. We feel goodness and we like it. So ask yourself, did people do people feel kindness from me? We can it's easy to think everything is okay with me. But if people don't experience it, we have to do something about it. We cannot live in an old thoughts and uh, we have to find out what are people meeting in me. <coughs> what do you do when you don't meet kindness from other people? Give back in the same way? Perhaps, but that's not good. <laughs> it's easy to be kind to the kind people, but what with the unkind? God's love in me is not only for the kind one, it is for everyone. Remember, you, you are you, regardless of other. You present yourself independent of others' behavior. You are not what other, others do to you. You are what you are doing towards others. Everything coming from me is me, if I like it or not. I can't talk or react for other people. My reaction in mine is mine, whatever the cause of it. Kindness is not to be a slipper hero for others. Kindness can be firm and determined. So look for kindness in your life. Jealousy. It's not jealousy in love. Elisa asked for a double of Elias' spirit, not out of jealousy, but he wanted more from God. He wanted to see more of God than he had seen earlier. His motive was not to be a big prophet, but to serve God. Our motives are decisive. It is not jealousy to see others' gift and want the same gift. God has enough for all of us. Jealousy is when we ca can't rejoice when other people prosper and have success. Nobody can take your place or my place. What God has for me and for you is yours. Nobody can stop me or, or you. The only thing that can stop you and, or hindering you is yourself. That's amazing. Nobody can stop us. Nobody can hinder us. So we need not jealousy. God has not, uh, enough for every one of us. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. Paul says in Romans 12, 3, For by the grace of God, given to me, I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but think so as to have sound judgment, as God has a opportunity a a yeah, to each a degree of faith. 
I believe this was say, uh, says what Paul is thinking about when he says, God not brag, not self-praise, not to think more highly of myself than I ought to think. It's, is it allowed to be satisfied with yourself? Of course. But don't do yourself more important than God do. Think what God is thinking of you. Find out what he says about you and be in line with him. When you have success, don't be arrogant by con condescending others. Be thankful to God and enjoy the time of success and go to the next task, challenge that is waiting for you. Don't uh, live in in the success. Take new steps. Proud or arrogance is not the way to act or what you say. But w yes, proud and arrogance is not what you say, but and uh, it's not what you say and act, but what is inside of you. We can hide the evil. We can hide proud and arrogance for a while, but sooner or later it will come to the surface. So get rid of it. Love is not rude. It's not provoked. Don't be rude if you want to live in love. It doesn't fit together. Don't let people provoke you. You decide to be provoked. Live in peace and truth with everybody. That's our choice. Love is not self-seeking. Selfishness is an attitude. So protect your heart. Be always aware of your motive for doing something. We can look unselfish, but do something to build our own platform. Don't have a hidden agenda to what you do. In all you do, do it for Christ. Don't do it for yourself. Rejoice with the truth. Love rejoice when we live in truth. Truth has to be the foundation in our lives. We have to build on truth. There is no joy and love in life. Love bears all things. Despite what is coming, we have to stand, also in difficult times. We don't know everything in front of us, so we can be surprised of negative things. Therefore, we need the love of God to stand. If you are standing, it is difficult to step on you. So da don't lie down. Be standing. Don't give up regardless of what you are facing. Love, believe all things. Seek the best in everyone without being fooled and seduced. Have faith in God what he has given to our brothers and sisters. Of course we shall not believe in the enemy and his people. Love believes all in God. Believe the whole Bible, every word from God. We cannot pick and choose what, we, what to believe. The word of God is the truth. We have to take it all. Love, hope, all things. Love has, it, has its hope in God and gives us hope for the future. future. <laughs> Love endures all things. Love endures everything. Jesus is our example. He endured a painful death. That kind of love is what we need. Love never fails. The love of God never fails. We can read and hear people who say, the love ended. But that is not love of God. It endures forever. It is so important that we stay in his love and 
talk about his love and not our limit love. Why is Paul so de detailed when he is describing what love is and what it, it isn't? Perhaps he wants us to think about it so we can put light in our own life and look into the love in my life. And we, we need to know what the opposite is. As I said, it's so easy to talk nice about love, but we have to know what it contains, what it means in real life. When we know what love is, then we can test ourselves, test what in, is in my heart. Do I find unkindness, jealousy, selfishness, and so on in my life? Don't look into others. That's not your business or your call. God don't tell us to look in others' life. We have to seek our own love. If you find such thing in your life that's not from God, not it needn't be a big thing, very little. Get rid of it. When you do so, it's no place for God's love in you. Make sure that God's love comes out of you when something is picking on you, either a good one or a bad one. We can pray a prayer in Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. It's a good pray to pray so God can, can talk to us. Matthew 20, 22, 39. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for others. You have to experience the love of God in your own life before you can love others. It is not selfish to love ourselves. It is necessary. You have to take care of yourself and it's easier when you love yourself. Um, Jesus don't say you you, you only have to love your neighbor. No, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. And this is a, a secret. We need to know. First John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. It, if anyone says, I love God and hate, work against his Christian brother. He is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has seen. And he, this commandment we have from him, that one who loves God should also unselfishly love his brother and seek the best for him. We love because he first loved us. Nobody can love it without be having love. We cannot demand somebody to love us. And nobody can demand love from you. Love is a free gift. And we need to experience that love of God in our lives before God's love can flow through us. Remember, love is nothing you can demand. And nobody can demand from each other. It's a free gift from God. And we give it freely when we have experienced it. That's a key. We cannot give anything we don't have. When we experience the love of God ourselves, our inner man will be filled up and our need for love from people is not so strong. God is the source for our love. No man. He loved us first. 
not the church, not the people in the church, but God loved us. <coughs> of course, you shall experience the love of God through his people, but we cannot demand anything from people, not anything. God's love to us in, in is unconditional. We need not to do anything to the service. We can't do anything to the service. God say here how we can test ourselves. If we hate or work against our Christian brother, we don't love God. It means we can't say something and act in another way. Our love for God are seen in the way we treat other people. We can't hide by saying, God sees my heart. Yes, God sees your heart, but he sees also how we treat another. Ephesians 4, 2. With all humility and gentleness, gentleness with patience, bearing with one another in unselfish love. Humility and unselfish love help us to be patient and bearing with another. We have to be patient with, another, with one another. If humility and unselfish love are absent in my life, I have to ask myself, do I need more of God's love in my life? Dare to ask yourself the rough question. Don't make excuses for yourself. Then you are fooling yourself. <coughs> First Peter 4, 8. Above all, have fervent and unfailing love to one another because love covers a multitude of sin. This don't mean we can sin as much as we wish because the love cover my sins. No, if we sin and confess our sins to somebody, God forgives us. And the person covers your sin from other people. He don't tell everybody about it. His love for God cover your sin and he will help you to be free from it. You can't stay in his love or have a sinful lifestyle and live in the blessings of God. It don't fit together. How can we stay in God's love? Jude, verse 20 and 21. But you, beloved, build yourself upon your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit and keep yourself in the love of God, waiting anxiously and looking forward to the mercy of your Lord Jesus Christ. Pray in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and keep yourself in the love of God. Praying in the Holy Spirit keeps us in the love of God. God has given us the tools to stay in his love. Use your heavenly language in your private life. Communicate with God in the spirit will keep you in the love of God. Use your tongue. It makes miracle in you. When you pray in the spirit, your words is not in your mind. You can only have you can you only have focus on God and you don't need to form nice words. Just let the Holy Spirit speak through you. Keep yourself in the love of God. You have to keep you have to keep you there. God will not do it for you. It is your responsibility to keep you in the right place. <coughs> John fifteen ten. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in his love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain is his love. It doesn't mean that if you keep the Ten Commandments, you automatically will stay in the love of God. 
I believe when Jesus talks about the commandments, he means, he means all the word of God, the whole Bible. We need, need to live the word of God. The love of God is in his word, his whole word. We can't choose what we like. When we choose God, we choose all about him, all he is saying and all his character. If we choose to turn away from his commandments, his word, the consequences will hit us. We can choose our way, but we don't choose the consequence. They follow our choice. Obed my teaching. What is obedience? To that's the to do what you are told, not only hearing and do as you always do, but listen and do the changes that require. We can't just read and hear and forgot what we hear. Obedience is also a choice, and that will also keep us in God's love. First John four sixteen. We have to come to know and have believed that love which God has for us, God is love. And the one who ab abides in love abides in God. And God abides continually in him. The one who abides, well, who is that? You and me. We have to abide in the love of God. It's our responsibility. How can we say that? By keeping his commandments and obey his teachings. By keeping and obeying. How many feelings you need to keep commandments and to obey teaching? None. It's not by feeling, it's by faith. One more word from First Johannes 5, 1. Everyone who believes with a deep ab abiding trust in the fact that Jesus is Christ the Messiah, the anointed, is born of God. That is reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. purpose. And everybody who loves the and everybody who loves the child born of him. But this we know without any doubt, doubt that we we love the children of God, expressing that love when we love God and obey his commandments for the true love of God is this that we ability keep his commandments and remain focused on his prospect precepts and his commandments and his precepts are not difficult to obey for the true love of God is this that we ability habitually keep his commandments and remain focused on his prospect we make it our habit to keep his commandments and focus on his prospect. Our thoughts have to be his thoughts. It's no room for my definition, my meanings. I show my love for God when I became one with his word, his commandments, and lay down my own thoughts. Colossians. Colossana 3, 12. So as God's own chosen people, we, we are holy, set apart, sanctified, fight, sanctified for his purpose and be well beloved by God himself. Put, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience which have the power to endure whatever injustice and unpleasant come with good temper, bearing graciously with one another, if one has a cause for complaining against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you forgive him. By all, beyond all these things, put on and wrap yourself in an unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity, for everything is brought together in agreement when each one seeks the best for others. 
Put on and wrap yourself in unselfish love. Paul tells us to put on and wrap ourselves. Don't wait for God to do it. You are the active part of what you are putting on you. You have to put, you have to open up your heart, your soul, so God can make his way to you. Unfel unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Unselfish love is not love of man. It is love of God. Selfish people can't make unselfish love only God. Unselfish love means to forget about yourself. Of course you have to take care of yourself, your body, your soul and spirit. If you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. Selfishness and unselfishness is attitude in our hearts. And you are the one you are and you are the one who know your limits. Some people can eat you up. You must know where to say yes and where to say no. It is your responsibility. You are not selfish when you say no. It can be a help for other people. Everybody will meet no in their way. And we have to handle yes and no. It's important to meet it so we can handle it. <coughs> perfect bond in unity. Nothing is perfect, perfect without God. So the love of God without selfishness is the perfect bond of unity. We can't make unity, real unity, without God. Paul is talking about to put on something. We have to do. But in Rome 5.5 5 he also says, such hope never disappoints us because God's love has abundantly poured out within our hearts. The Holy Spirit who was given to us you can think this is contradiction, but God never goes against himself. It's both. God has poured out his love in us, but we need to, to be conscious about it. We can choose to be selfish or to live in God's love. God had put his love in us. In the same way, Paul said we have to put it on us. So we have to choose what uh, resource we are living out from. Let God be your l the loudest voice in your attitude. Dominate your circumstances. Love is not a ritual or nice word. It's a lifestyle and it is freedom. You don't need to act in a special way. We have to stay in love that is poured out. Make room for it to dominate our circumstances. Love requires no special behavior. Just take time with God and let him touch you. Don't allow people to put rituals or phrase on you. In the Holy Spirit is freedom and God's love has the same freedom as the Holy Spirit. You can't have the same relationship with everybody, but God's love in you can be the same to all people. Philippians 1, 9. And this I pray, that your love might abound more and more in real knowledge and in p practical insight. God's love in us is not only a feeling. Love needs knowledge so we can make right choices. The feel or feelings are not always right. We need knowledge. If we have to be a judge in some personal case, we need knowledge from God so we can give right advice. When we live 
in love and God life. We don't hurt others and are not leading others to sin. It is great protection when we stay in God's love. God's love is a gift. We can't do anything to deserve it, but we have to stay in it as God's so God's life, light and truth can flow through us, from God to people. And at last, God's love never ends. It is eternal. Amen. <laughs>